built in Disneyland in 1967 and Disney World in 1973, odds are, if you grew up with Disney parks, you grew up with Pirates of the Caribbean. And of course, this ride inspired the franchise that gave us one of the funniest pirate characters of all time, Guy Rush Threepwood. Okay, I hate to interrupt this whole video for a rant, but this is the internet, so. First off, yes, I enjoyed all three Pirates of the Caribbean movies. They were a bit overrated, but they had fun characters, some cool action, and the most delightfully convoluted plot lines outside of an Arrested Development episode. That said, elements from the movies don't belong in the ride. The movie was based on the ride. You don't go back and change the original to accommodate the spin-off. Who do you think you are, George Lucas? It's like going back to all subsequent printings of Lord of the Rings and replacing Glorfindel with Arwen. Well, it's not quite that sacrilegious, but it still annoys me. Okay, so this Davy Jones effect is actually pretty awesome, but the CGI feels unbelievably out of place among the 30 to 40 year old animatronics. And I do love Jeffrey Rush's Barbosa in the movies, but Paul Frees's Wicked Wench Captain was a freaking icon and it's just not the same without him. And the Jack Sparrows, oh the Jack Sparrows. Admittedly, Jack Sparrow coming out of this barrel is more kid-friendly than what was originally there, but these are pirates! Besides, the kids are hiding their eyes from the skeletons, they won't see the naked woman. But the worst offense is that almost every pirate in the ride is now talking about Jack Sparrow. Barbosa's looking for him, the guys dunking Carlos are looking for him, the pooped pirates hiding the map from him. They gave the pirates ride a direct storyline. That's just raw. The entire fun of growing up riding Pirates of the Caribbean was the mystery of it all. You enter this mysterious faraway world that you don't know, and you get to use your imagination as you wonder who these pirates are and what their story is. And if I may return to Monkey Island for a second, Ron Gilbert has stated that half of the inspiration for the tone of the first game was wanting to get off the boat, explore the settings, and find out who the characters on this ride are. You don't get that same sense of wonder when they tell you that Jack is responsible for all this like a self-insert Mary Sue in a bad fanfic. Hell, half of the fun of the movies was seeing them reference so many scenes from the ride, weaving them into the story, like it was one interpretation of what was going on in the ride. That couldn't have even happened in the first place if the ride had just told us what was going on like this. Sadly, these updates have been made at both Anaheim and Orlando, so I'll just have to learn to accept them. But how do the East and West Coast versions compare to each other? Well, I'm complaining about a lot right now, so I'll start with one aspect I actually prefer in Orlando, the line area. In Disneyland, it zigzags you in front of a house, then you go inside and wait a little longer and get in a boat. Magic Kingdom at least takes you past cannons, cargo holds, and other stuff that feels like it belongs in a pirate story. Other than that, the Magic Kingdom version is, um, short. Seriously, it's something like half as long as its Disneyland forebear. There's no Blue Bayou restaurant, no calm yet haunting banjo strumming, which incidentally was another thing Monkey Island referenced, no talking skull, only one drop, fewer treasure rooms and skeletons, and no awesome gunfight in an explosives warehouse at the end. Granted, while the gunfight at the end of Disneyland's Pirates is cool, I did always think being pulled up the hill without another drop at the end was anticlimactic, and the Walt Disney World version has the famous jail scene at the very end, which is actually an interesting idea. And despite a touch of 80s sitcom style, ha ha, here we go again, with the goofy escape attempts, it shows the ultimate consequences of a life of piracy, which would leave the ride with a very poignant and somber impression, were it not immediately followed by a drunk singing Jack Sparrow. Yeah. So long story short, Pirates of the Caribbean at Walt Disney World is nowhere near as great as Pirates at Disneyland, and Pirates at Disneyland of today is nowhere near as great as Pirates at Disneyland of the past. But despite my complaints, I still love the ride. I may not like the new changes, but there's still plenty of goodness there, and they haven't completely destroyed the atmosphere yet. And as far as songs from Disney rides go, I don't really mind getting this one stuck in my head. Yo, oh, yo, oh, the pirates for me. 